I mean to, to fade it out. Hello, everybody. Come on in. Come on in. Thank you all so much for being here. For anybody new here, hi, I am Maggie, your substitute teacher. I would like to welcome you to yet another struggle cooking class where I am not a professional chef, nor am I a professional YouTuber. I'm just a mom and a home cooker sharing my love of food on my health and wellness journey with you all. We are making brown sugar today. We are making sugar-free brown sugar today. I am going to recreate a recipe I saw on another Chris Cook in Nashville um, stream. He made his version of the McGriddle. He calls them Chris Griddles. And he showed the way that he gets the little syrup bursts inside the little pancake bun. And I was like, I've got to do this. I've got the ingredients on hand. So usually I buy my own sugar-free sugar. You all have seen the swirls that I use or lots of other different brands. My counter is wet. Let me start by cleaning off the counters. Um, or like I always say, I'm not the food police. If you can have real brown sugar, have some for me. So maybe you have something like this. All right, nothing wrong with that. We are gonna see if we can make our own. Very simple. This is a non-cooking recipe, but I am going to cook with the sugar that we make. All right, everybody, so we're gonna take attendance. If you would like to be counted present, feel free to announce yourself. However, if you prefer to watch quietly from the clouds and y'all know who you are, you're always welcome here. We are the happy, wholesome, family-friendly side of YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. So let's see, TikTok, y'all don't stop. Hello, Pink. Hello, Linda Knight, Shirley, Hannah, Dot Dill. Interesting, Mary, uh, Rosen, ST, uh, Peaches, 44, Paola or Paola, Mary, Lulu Hair, Owen, Vicky, Marion, Quit Playing, Sarah, Ray, Jesslyn, Dr. Willard, and Gloria. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. We got Gord West coming in on excuse me, on Instagram. Thank you so much for being here. Yergin, always coming through from across the pond. He says, good evening, everyone. Uh, good evening to you in Germany. We've got Rachel O saying, hello, hello. Hello, my dear. And Christina says, hi, beautiful lady. Thank you for the compliment. I appreciate it. All right, let's start with cleaning the counters and um, washing my hands. I'm going to show you all the video. As always, I have tagged it in the uh, description so you all can uh, find it, but I'll show you. It's just a little 60 second clip um, and then we're going to get the ingredients out and make it. All right. Happy Monday, everybody. I hope you're doing well. All right. <clears throat> so brown sugar is a staple in most kitchens if you're a cooker or a baker. You know, especially we're supposed to be coming up on springtime, but it's still a little bit cold. Um, and I have something I want to make with this brown sugar. I'll show you all later. But, um, you know, especially in the fall, those spices, the pumpkin. Hello, Margo. Thank you for being here, my dear. Um, those spices, pumpkin, any of the apple, any of those fall flavors, uh, brown sugar goes really well with you. Put it in your oatmeal. Put it on anything. Put it on everything. All right. All right, let me just give the disclaimer. I was halfway <laughs> taken off polish and I ran out of time. So don't judge me or judge me. It's totally fine. This is really me at home. There is no, <laughs> there is no staff here to help me. All right, so let me show you all the video. Okay, and again, it's linked in the description. Shout out to Chris Cook in Nashville. He has a cooking channel where he makes carnivore recipes. So those of you all that are heavy on the protein that don't really like or want anything else, he's got a lot of recipes. And again, he was making his version of the McGriddle. And so this is in that um, stream. So let me show it to you all. And then we will play the video and then see if we can recreate it. And I'm gonna make the exact batch, like I tell you all, the first time I always do it exactly the way they do it. And then after that, we can doctor it up. I'll kind of double or quadruple the amount. All right, so just so you all can see. So this is Chris Cook in Nashville Carnivore Keto Chris Griddles. Okay, so that is the stream. I don't know if you all can see. I know sometimes it's hard, but it's linked in the description. All right, so this is a 60, se 60 second clip from that episode. All right, so let me make it bigger and louder and we'll watch it together, all right? Now for the keto version, or if you're a dirty carnivore that does the sweeteners from time to time, we're going to start with a quarter cup of allulose. 
and directly to the bowl of allulose, we're going to add a half of a teaspoon of maple extract. And we're going to start to stir that together. And this is optional, but just so you can see this a little better, I'm going to add some brown food coloring to this, just a drop. And truthfully, the easiest way to combine this all is to just use your fingers to mix all of the maple extract and that brown food coloring through the allulose. And you'll be left with a brown maple flavored keto sugar, which is going to be used to make our perfectly keto and slightly sweet pancake. Okay, so look, I am not a professional chef. I am not a professional YouTuber. I just play one, okay? But uh, I looked it up. Brown sugar actually gets its brown color from molasses. Do I have molasses? No. Margo says you're making a McGriddle. I'm not, sweetheart. Maybe I should. It's been a while, but um, I'm going to make some... Um, some fried apples with the brown sugar, but uh, a McGriddle would sound, sounds really, really good. But you all let me know how else you would use this uh, sugar-free brown sugar. All right, so um, in the video, he said a quarter cup of allulose. All right, so we have allulose and I got this either from Walmart or Amazon. So allulose is one of our sugar-free sugars. You can see this says zero calorie sweetener. And this one says plant-based. I am not the food police, do whatever works for you. But this is a great substitute if you are pre-diabetic. <laughs> Margo says, sounds good, I'm here for it. Thank you, sweetheart. Uh, if you're pre-diabetic or diabetic, trying to watch the calories, watch the carbs, this could be an option for you. Some people don't like the uh, substitute sweeteners, that's fine too. Maybe you can make this with real sugar, I don't know, but this is our granulated uh, sugar, zero calorie. Now, um, I'm your substitute teacher because I cook with sugar substitutes, dairy substitutes, and gluten substitutes, okay? But you can probably make everything I make with full flavor, all right? Hello, Bonnie. Thank you so much for being here. So we have our allulose. So this is what I'm going to use, and it would probably work with any sweetener that you have. Um, some are laboratory-made, like aspartame and sucralose. Some are natural or plant-based. So just do whatever works for you, all right? So we have this, and these are the same ingredients from his keto maple syrup. Y'all remember we made that maple syrup? I wanna make another batch of that too, pour it on everything. Okay, so we're gonna start with the allulose, and then he says we're gonna add some maple extract to it. So I have this maple extract. This is just the McCormick. You can get it at Walmart or anywhere you get all your extracts. Y'all know I got all these. <laughs> extracts over here. I'm not a huge maple fan. Uh, shout out to Vermont and Canada. We love y'all. But I think the maple flavor can be a little bit overpowering when you buy it. Uh, Margo says, you remember that live? All right, we're doing a part two. So this maple extract, what I love about making your own is that you can control the amount. So you'll see here, I think he said half a teaspoon. So we're going to put in a half a teaspoon of the maple. Um, if you don't have maple, you could do probably whatever flavor you like, right? You could make any flavor brown sugar. Ooh, vanilla brown sugar, cinnamon brown sugar. Ooh, y'all, see, this is what I do. My mind just starts going like, ooh, focus, Maggie. Let's stick to the first recipe, all right? And then it's only three ingredients. And he says this is optional, but this really makes a difference. This is brown food coloring, all right? So I got this also from Walmart. This is icing coloring, and we're just gonna do a drop. This is gonna help us get that brown color that's going to add to the extract and the allulose. So we're gonna try this right now and see if we can make some brown sugar, taste it, and then cook with it. And then while what I wanna make is cooking, I will um, make more of it. Because what I'd love to do, I have this container just from the dollar store, just like a little glass jar, pantry storage. Um, I would love to make this much of the brown sugar so I can have it um, on the ready. All right, so that is the goal. All right, just cleaning lady just came by, so it's counters are still a little bit wet. All right, but I am grateful. All right, so we have a bowl, and I have just a clear bowl so everybody can see. This is like a little storage container, all right? And then he says a quarter cup. My handle is broken, but we've got a quarter cup. This is our quarter cup measure, so we're going to fill this up with the allulose, all right? So we're just going to go in here. 
and I'm going to try and shake off the excess so it's kind of level. All right. So we're going to go in with a quarter cup of our sugar-free sugar, all right? <laughs> Want to be natural says, hi, on the train listening. Did you get some happy mail from me? Let me know. I haven't heard anything, but welcome. Glad you're here. Okay, and then also maple extract, he says half a teaspoon, okay? So let's uh, do half a teaspoon of our maple extract. Um, oh, it's right here. I already tried to prepare everything. Y'all, I'm not a professional. We just go with it. So we have our half a teaspoon measure here. So we're going to go in with the um, maple extract. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Okay. So let's go in and we'll make it Chris Cook in Nashville's recipe. If it's too strong, then you could uh, do less maple extract. If you want it even more like to me, maple's kind of earthy, then you could add more. All right. So this extract, I'm going to pour right over the bowl so I don't mess up. Usually these are, okay, it's not clear. It's got a little brown to it. All right, so I'm just going to stir it up with a spoon. He says, get in there with your hands. I'll do that too. But we're gonna stir this up and see if we can mix that extract with the, um, um, with the sweetener. So it is gonna kind of clump up on us and that's fine. And so now I see why. He says, get in there with your hands because we're gonna need to kind of smash some of these little wet pieces so we get that extract distributed well. But this is nice, very exciting. All right, so you can see the color by itself is a very, very, very light brown. Um, and you know, we want that brown sugar experience. So, okay, it looks like he mixes it with his hands before he adds the food coloring. So stirring it with the spoon, we've gotten most of it mixed up, but I will go ahead and get in there with my hand and just feel for any clumps. And I'm gonna taste it before the food coloring, all right? So it kind of feels like wet sand. So if you've ever been at the playground um, after the rain, it kind of feels like cool, wet sand. So I'm just getting in there and I'm literally just running my fingers through it. If I have any wet maple clumps, I actually do like the smell. It kind of smells sweet. Christina says, do they sell pumpkin extract? I'm sure they do, y'all. There's so many of these. There's butter extract. There's lemon extract. Ooh, a lemon sugar. Uh, thank you all for the flames on IG. Hello, King Flex. All right. So we've got this pretty much um, mixed up. I'm gonna take a little taste of it. I'm always curious, and the, we'll add the brown food coloring just for color. Y'all, it tastes so good. And this is a great, for me, this is a great use of maple because it's not too heavy. It tastes like, <sighs> the candies, Y'all know those peppermints, the soft peppermints that melt in your mouth. So it's kind of got that consistency, like just a little bit of liquid and it just dissolves. But it's got like a, a little bit of, it's not minty, but it's like, like a cross between a soft peppermint and a buttermint. Y'all know those after, those restaurant buttermints that are at the hostess stand? That's what this is. We could probably make some of our own. Let me clean my hands. Oh, all right. Devalian says, it's been a while. I made class when I'm at work. Got you on mute. Okay. Thank you for being here. Y'all can watch without listening. You can listen without watching. I'm just glad you're here. Margo says, you know those soft mints I'm talking about. Is that Annex Cleaning? Hello, sweetheart. You just came and did a wonderful job. If you want to drop your website uh, or your um uh, however, your business phone number, I'll pin it there. So if anybody's in the Atlanta area, I clean and do everything by myself. But once a month, uh, Annex will come and do the deep clean for me. And I'm very grateful. So yes, happy to support you all when you have businesses or, you know, y'all are supporting me. So I want to support you. Okay. So we have our soft, cool mint. Um, now let's do, he says, one drop of food coloring. All right. So we're gonna go in with this brown and I just bought this at Walmart, literally brown food coloring. I didn't even know they made brown food coloring. All right, so I'm gonna try and carefully 
peel back the foil. Y'all know with food coloring, a little goes a long way. So I'm going to literally just a drop. And I'm going to stir it and see what color I get first. Because you all know food coloring, you can really overdo it. Okay, I might need more. He said a drop, but hold up. Watch me have like a little. Okay, I think we need a little bit more. Let me just kind of. Oh, I've got a, I think, yeah, I'm probably gonna have to get in there with my hands. I don't know if y'all like light brown sugar or dark brown sugar. I think I'm gonna have to do one more drop. You can see the little clumps of browns. I didn't get it evenly done. Let's try one more drop of brown food coloring and then I'll get in there with my hands. All right. All right, that was two drops. All right, so this is gonna be a little bit messy art project, but uh, it's definitely coming together more. You just gotta get in there, see how it's starting to get browner. We may do one more drop. Y'all let me know if you like this color, if we wanna go a little bit more. So we've got our sugar-free sugar and we got our flavor and I'm literally like just trying to smear that color in between my fingers. So you're really going to have to almost get in there to get this brown sugar. And this is sugar free, zero calorie. But wherever you would use brown sugar, you could use this. Hello, gifted. Thank you for being here. Oh, it's coming together, y'all. I think three drops is the key for me. Look. So he used this recipe when he was making his McGriddles. So I'm just kind of going from the bottom. We got a few places that don't have color, but y'all, we made like a maple leaf sugar-free brown sugar. Shout out to Chris Cook in Nashville. Doesn't it look like brown sugar, y'all? Oh my goodness. All right, so let me just clean my hands. And then here's the test. It's been a while since I made fried apples. I get this is what are we making, mama? <laughs> We're making sugar-free brown sugar, which we just did. But of course, I can't leave y'all just with this. Um, I'll taste it again, see if the food coloring made any difference. Um, but we're gonna make some fried apples and let those simmer while I make more of this because I really would love to get like a big container full. All right, let me clean my hands. <laughs> All right, so let me get a clean spoon for tasting. I'm very excited. Ah, we got Lisa, Lisa, and Cult Jam in the house. Head to toe. Uh, I know. Y'all know I'm always having outbursts. Yes, it's Autumn is here. Hello, my dear. Oh, you're going to leave now? I think it's okay. I know you work so hard, but uh, if you want to type in your website or your business number, I'm happy to share. All right. Now getting there, getting in there with my hands, I did get a little brown food coloring on my fingers, but y'all, we made brown sugar. All right. So let me just stir it up, go around the sides. It looks like a light brown sugar. And I'm going to give this a little taste. It's really good. It tastes like crystallized pancake syrup. I'm loving it. Now, of course, we know real brown sugar has molasses in it. I don't have molasses, but we use the same maple extract and we use allulose. So our sugar-free plant-based sugar, zero calorie. So, you know, think of what you could do with this. You could put it on a garnish if you're making desserts. Thank y'all for the hearts. Bottom line with Blue says, it does look like brown sugar. You'll capture replay. Absolutely. I'll play the video again, y'all. It's super simple. We got Sheila. Oh, 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 Sheila. I love it when you come to class, Sheila. Y'all, what is wrong with me? I don't know, but I'm not going to stop. <laughs> we got everybody saying hello. Okay, so let us see 
Um, we've made our sugar-free brown sugar. I think it looks great. I am going to cook with this. So we're gonna make some fried apples. Uh, so I'm gonna move this behind me so I don't knock it over, but we will put this in the pan and then we'll make some more. What else would you all do? Like you could do brown sugar. What other extracts would you all use? I know, um, Christina said pumpkin. That would be a good extract. All right, so we've got the um, fried apples in the Maggie cookbook. Let me see, did I put it up? This is a dessert that we're gonna make just with regular apple. If you don't like fruit or you got picky, um, picky kids or picky big kids, I'll be making man food later that don't like uh, fruit, I'll show you guys a way to make it like a dessert. If you like apple pie, I got you. Hello, Nehemiah. Thank you so much for being here. All right, let me see if I got my cookbook. So y'all can always go to teachablemomentswithmaggie.com for your own copy. I know Lisa's got a copy. If you want an autographed copy, um, I have these available. The digital version is, a, is interactive, so you get the video as well, but um, I made all of these recipes sugar-free, dairy-free, gluten-free. We've got pancakes, Maggie cakes, breakfast, beverages, all that stuff. And I think a little bit about me, and then I think at the very end, I have the fried apples. Okay. All right, that picture is not that great. Let me make you all a fresh one. Okay, so here's what you do. You need an apple. I actually have an opal apple. I like these. I'm going to show you all my little hack for getting in here. I think it's, it may be lame to y'all, but the little things uh, make me happy. So I'm just going to get a cutting board. Usually when I do the fried apples, I do slices and I cook them flat, but I am going to top this on some, something I have in the fridge. So I'm actually going to dice it. Christina loves anything with apples. All right, this is for you. We got Belle in the house. She says, hi, Maggie in class, making sugar. You're heading to the dentist. Yeah, we made a sugar-free brown sugar. So no worries about those cavities, right? I was told, my man said, Maggie, your smile is like an emoji. I'm like, I don't even know what that means, but I know y'all, I got a big toothy smile, but y'all keep coming back. This is me. <laughs> okay. Let's get the cutting board. All right, so this was gifted to us. Thank you, uh, Victoria, for the Pampered Chef Acacia Wood cutting board. So uh, we'll get this and the knife. We've got some knives here. All right, so let me wash this apple and then I'm gonna core it and I'm gonna dice it up. Hello, Extract Daily and hello, Y Beth. Thank you all so much for being here. And Lisa's spokesperson, shout out to South Africa. It has been a while. Y'all, I understand life happens. If you're new here, I do stream every day. Usually it's about 50-50 food and femininity, but uh, look, I'll always be here. So whenever you can make it, you can make it. All right, let's wash our apple. So if you have apples laying around, this could be a great fruit. Uh, this is something that you could make in bulk and uh, heat up. Those of you all who like to meal prep, uh, those of you all who like to, let me keep my sugar here so y'all can see. I'm proud of my little sugar. Ah, uh, sugar, dun, 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 ah, uh, honey, honey, dun, 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 you are my candy girl. And you got me wanting you. Why am I doing this? I don't know. Okay, Christina, this one didn't come through, but thank you, dear. Okay, focus, Maggie. If you're new here, I have musical outbursts. That's just what it is. And you see my uh, cutting board moving for safety reasons. You can put a wet paper towel underneath. <laughs> Y'all are laughing at me. And it'll kind of keep it on the on the cutting board, so it's on the counter, so it doesn't move. Hello, Mr. M, thank you so much for being here. All right, so you probably have one of these. All right, <laughs> y'all, there's a whole bunch of sugar songs 
going through my head right now. And if I go down that rabbit hole, we will be here all night. Hello, the cool Nana. Sara Garvey. Oh my gosh. So good to see you. Sara, um, Sara is also a content creator. I met him in London. I'm actually coming back to, okay, it's not London. I'm going to Surrey. In case y'all don't know, I was invited to come to my first polo and of course i'm taking y'all with me so in june i've been invited to the cartier queen's cup semi-final polo match i'm so grateful uh vivian from woman of elegance has invited me so i will be coming um <laughs> margo says you're working a 12-hour shift go ahead and sing i'll be coming to surrey which i believe is outside of london for my first polo match, y'all. So I do love to travel and I take y'all with me wherever I go. So good to see you, Sara. I hope you're doing well. Hello, BMD uh, Blue House. Okay, so you probably have something like this. It's a vegetable peeler in your kitchen, but y'all, did you know this is actually an apple corer? I didn't either. I don't know where I saw it, but I've been using it ever since. Um, and this is poor etiquette, never gesture with utensils. If you're dining and you need to make a point, put your cutlery down. I don't know if it's Surrey County or Surrey somewhere. Um, I'm going to wherever they play polo. Have I ever been to a polo match? No, <laughs> but I can't wait. All right, so stay tuned, more is coming. Um, and I also teach a finishing school with Luke Hazley. You can get on the wait list if you're interested. We teach ladies of all ages about elegance etiquette and uh, femininity. Oh, there it is, y'all. I'll be going to a polo match in the fall. We'll be teaching the kids this summer. So in July, we'll be teaching the kids if you're interested in that. And then Lucy and I teach the finishing school. So if you ever are dining, oh, that's right. Egypt is this summer. London will be after Egypt. Absolutely. Ah, Lisa says polo matches are so much fun. Oh my goodness. Thank you. I've never been. Um, but yeah, so if you're ever dining and you uh, need to talk, then you put your cutlery down. And then you, if you talk with your hands or gesture or whatever you can, then you pick your cutlery back up to eat. What you don't want to do is, and another thing, and can you believe? No, we don't do that. Okay, so we have our apple, we have our vegetable peeler. I am going to keep the skin on these apples. I like the... I like the roughage and I like the way it kind of gets wrinkly when you like saute it with butter and brown sugar, which we just made. So exciting. Okay, focus Maggie. So if your apple is kind of symmetrical, then to take out the core, you're just gonna take this pointy end and I'm gonna go straight down, you know, careful. I usually just kind of poke a little bit and then go all the way through with my hand out of the way and then kind of put it down on the, you know, slice it down on the pit. Then if it were symmetrical, all you have to do is go around like this and it takes the apple core out. Who knew? I've done it a hundred times and it cracks me up every time. Y'all have these at home. Okay, focus Maggie. So let's dice our apple. All right, so your vegetable peeler has two uses. Remember your cutting board here. Oh, can y'all see on TikTok? Remember your cutting board has two uh, sides, the side with the groove. Get into the groove. This side is for your liquid so they don't spill onto the counter and the flat side would be for your dry items, okay? So now let's dice this up. I am going to do kind of a small dice because the smaller it is. Hello, Curvy Girl Beth, been a while. Hope you're doing well. Y'all check out Curvy Girl Beth. She does plus size fashion and all kind of good stuff over there. Um, the smaller the pieces, the faster it will cook, all right? Margo says, I never knew that. I know y'all, we learn together. So I'm just gonna go, you know, in half. Usually what I do, and then for safety, you know, put the flat side down and I just keep cutting in half. Usually when I make, fried apples, I'll do little slivers like this, like you would get in your, you know, McDonald's or whatever. But I'm actually going to dice them because I'm going to use these fried apples as a topping for something cold I have in the fridge. All right, so we're just going to go by half and then half again. And this is another way too, like I said, if you don't like eating fruit this is a way to get it in for the kids 
then you can also, um, for me, it kind of makes me feel like I'm eating more. Hello, Scotty. When I just make small, um, when we cut it up into small pieces, I feel like I'm getting more. Maybe it's just a mental thing. I don't know, but it's just one apple. But you know, when you um, when you like to eat, like clearly I do, it's a problem. Cutting up, probably like taking smaller bites. All right, so we've got half of our apple. Like to get my scraper out so I can pretend I, I look like a professional. <laughs> we got Cat Williams in the house. We got Sassy or Shassy. Hello. All right. So let's do the rest of this apple. I've got a little bit on there. And again, you could do this anyway. Um, diced is what I'm going to do because I want little small like apple toppings. I got a little bit of core left. Um, but slivers are nice too, especially like if you wanted to present the fried apples, these little pieces with the longer flat side <clears throat> gives you uh, more surface area. All right, so let's just dice these. So I'm using apple, you could do this with pear. Um, what other, what else have I seen fried? Um, you could do pear. Whatever you like, whatever fruit you have on hand, you don't have to waste. And uh, it's really, really simple. All right, almost done. And uh, if it starts to brown a little bit, I'm okay with that because we're gonna put these in butter and brown sugar, sugar-free brown sugar that we just made. Usually when I make this, I use my uh, swerve, but now we can make it instead of buying it. All right, so let's get the skillet and I will show you all how to make a really simple dessert. So you see all of this from one apple. So if you're team greedy like me, you can get a lot more volume, which is important. All right, let's move our knife. Safety first. All right. So let's get our cooktop here. Done with that. And then you want um, you want a nice skillet. It doesn't have to be nonstick. It could probably be stainless. Hello, love Dante. Thank you, Joda, for liking the live stream. All right. So let's get our cooktop. And um, since I'm just doing one apple. Maybe it'll take like 10 minutes, but while it's working, we'll make some more sugar-free brown sugar. All right, so let's plug this up and then I'm going to get a skillet from my secret storage. Keep the good stuff in the oven. The boys can use the stuff in the fridge. I was here yesterday with Alex, I'm still recovering. All right, so we're going to um, get the skillet and we're going to put this on. Let's do like a medium. I'll probably do medium low to start because I'm slow. And then we're going to put some butter in here to keep it dairy free. I'm going to use a plant based butter. But if you can have dairy, use your regular butter. It's fine. Butter. I'll use this goat's butter if I have to. Let me just check the other fridge, y'all. I'm not out of butter.
Oh no, I have some. I moved it. Lord of mercy. I almost panicked. I forgot I put it in the butter dish. If it's a, if it were a snake, it would have got me, right? Okay, so I'm using, let me turn this down. I'm using this country crock. This is plant butter, but again, use whatever you have, all right? Um, I love dairy. It just doesn't love me back. So I'm going to do one to two tablespoons of butter. This one is softened, so I'm just going to do a nice spoonful in here, just enough to coat the bottom. If you like it really buttery, you can do extra. Love Dante. Hello, Milkman. We're making fried apples. We made brown sugar, sugar-free brown sugar too. All right. This much, just enough to kind of coat. All right. So we'll keep that there in case we need extra. All right. So we want the brown sugar, I'm sorry, we want the butter to go from solid to liquid to foaming, but keep your eye on it because butter can burn pretty quickly. So I'll turn this up to medium and I'm just going to move the pan around and let it kind of coat probably one tablespoon. Let's say one tablespoon per, ap per um, apple. All right. And we're doing one apple. But if you wanted to make like a huge pan of this, just adjust accordingly. All right. So once this starts to foam, hello, Juliana, that's a beautiful name, and Tatamale, I'm sure I butchered that, I'm so sorry. Uh, Lisa says, that's a great tip, I forgot it already. Oh, polo matches, I knew what you meant. <laughs> no problem, okay. So keep your eye on your butter. So now that this is bubbling, we're gonna go ahead and put in our brown sugar, how much? Um, I'm just going to kind of shake it in here, but it's probably a tablespoon. I just kind of do everything to kind of coat the pan. All right. And then I'll get a spatula. Ooh, it smells good already. You can really, once the heat gets to it, you can really smell that maple. And I'm going to stir it up. Stir it up. Little darling, stir it up. So let's stir this up so we don't have any more clumps. So we have our nice butter brown sugar sauce. All right, y'all can hear it sizzling. And then I just like to kind of make sure that I have a little bit on every piece of the pan. Kids can do this in the kitchen, but be really careful with uh, uh, melted sugar because it is lava hot. All right, so we've got this nice and foaming. Um, we could do some cinnamon too, if we wanted to, whatever warming spice you like. Now I'm just gonna dump the apples in here, okay? So we cut up one apple. Okay. And I'm gonna kinda shake it a little bit and I'm gonna let it set. So I want the apples to kind of pan fry in the butter brown sugar and also soften a little bit. So from time to time, I'll jig it a little, jiggle it a little bit. Get jiggy with it. Dun -dun 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 Is that the song? Get jiggy with it. Dun -dun 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 Y'all know what I mean. Okay. So let it percolate. Let it do its thing. And um, Again, you could do whatever you want to, but we're going to just go butter and brown sugar, okay? But if you like nutmeg, if you like clove, if you like any of that stuff, allspice, pumpkin spice, whatever. Christina says, cool. I forgot already. <laughs> okay. So we got some apple pieces that fell off. Kitchen snacks. And um, just let it do its thing. All right, y'all. So I am going to go back to the Chris Cook in Nashville recipe. And I think I want to like quadruple it. I want to have like a pantry brown sugar. So while this is doing its thing, I'll replay the video so you all can see. And I'd love to know what you all would use this brown sugar for. So again, Chris Cook in Nashville was making his carnivore McGriddles. I'm not carnivore, but I get inspirations from everything. 
So you know when you go to McDonald's, the McGriddle, they put the little pockets of syrup in the pancake. So when you bite into it, you get the little bursts of sweetness in your pancake sandwich. And so he figured out a way to recreate it. All right. So let me replay it for y'all and we'll make some more. Oh, volume. Does the sweetener for the keto version or if you're a dirty carnivore that does the sweeteners from time to time we're going to start with a quarter cup of allulose one cup and directly to the bowl of allulose we're going to add a half of a teaspoon of maple extract two teaspoons and we're going to start to stir that together and this is optional but just so you can see this a little better i'm going to add some brown food coloring to this Some just hand. to drop and truthfully, the easiest way to combine this all is to just use your fingers to mix all of the maple extract and that brown food coloring through the allulose. And you'll be left with a brown maple flavored keto sugar, which is going to be used to make our perfectly keto and slightly sweet pancakes. Okay, so that's what we're making. We got Chef Boy in the house. We got a real chef. I am not. I just play one on YouTube. All right, so let's take a look at our apples. And you just kind of keep an eye on these. So you can see they're cooking up. This is something you could kind of do low and slow on the skillet because you're gonna cook them down to your level of doneness for the apple. If you like them to still have a little bit of bite, then you won't cook them as long. If you like them like soft and ooey gooey, just let them sit and simmer, all right? So I'm just gonna stir it up a little bit, break up some of these chunks because you want that butter and brown sugar to get on everything. So y'all see, see what's starting to happen here? Careful not to touch it. Oh, do y'all see? See how it's starting to like, all right. So just kind of, again, add cinnamon, add whatever you want. I'm just breaking up any pieces because I want that butter bath to get in between every little piece. This could be apple slices and look, from one apple. <laughs> yeah, Will Smith, I was, uh, I was dancing. Okay, so let it keep going. So I am going to make more um, sugar-free brown sugar because I like it. And the other thing I was thinking, so this came from his uh, McGriddles recipe. Let's say you're meal prepping or you're cooking advanced for the kids. You could make a whole stack of pancakes or keto pancakes or whatever. And then instead of syrup, because it's messy, if you got to eat on the go or in the car or whatever, you could put these little, the little brown sugar in the pancakes and cook them so that when you bite into them, they're sweet without the, okay, maybe y'all can't relate. So we're going to quadruple his recipe. All right. So we'll just do it. Let's see. We're done with the apple. Got a little bit of butter in here. I feel like putting it in. All right, it won't come off the spoon. Maybe that's a sign. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna quadruple the recipe so I can have some and uh, sprinkle it on everything. So we made the batch per Chris's recipe. All right, so we're gonna make some more. How else would you all use this? So his recipe was for a quarter cup, which we did. So now I'm gonna quadruple it. So I'm gonna do a whole cup of allulose, okay? You could probably even do more than that, but so we've got one cup. We're going to go into the allulose again. Try this with whatever sweetener you have, maybe even sugar. So this is my plant-based zero-calorie sweetener. Ooh, Lisa says brown sugar and coffee. All right, y'all. So my, ooh, let me turn this down. See, my apples are starting to really brown a little bit. So if that's too brown for you, you can stop it. But I like it. I like the little crispy bits, all right? So what are y'all thinking about these fried apples? What would you put them on? So just kind of shake and let it sit. Let that butter and brown sugar do its thing. Christina says, yum, I want some. You could eat this by itself. Um, you could do it on a Sunday with ice cream. You could do it like if you like apple pie. 
Um, this is great for portion control. You could get like two graham crackers or for me, it would be a gluten-free graham cracker and crumble them up and then make like a sundae with like fried apples, frozen yogurt or whatever you can have and crack. Y'all. All right. So let's go in with the allulose. We're just going to repeat while these are cooking. Just be careful because the butter and brown sugar is hot. But I want it warm because I'm going to use it as a topping. Belle says, I put it in my oatmeal. That's what I was thinking. Exactly right, y'all. All right. So let's go in for a full cup. This might be a little messy with my hands, but we'll get it done. All right. Let me do it this way. Let's just pour. I'm trying to scoop. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. So almost a full cup. So this is the allulose. This is my plant-based sugar substitute on its own. Okay. Let me flip these apples again. I'm going to let them keep going just a few more minutes. Oh my gosh, y'all sugar-free and dairy-free y'all see all right all right and i'll just turn it down so you see how this is something that you could make in advance you could make this as a big batch um and then top it on put it on everything Ooh, christina says you put it in french toast where did i find the allulose i think i got this my two go-to's are walmart and amazon because i have amazon prime this might have come from amazon because i remember seeing this big old bag and i was like "Ooh, that's a lot I have Walmart Plus and Amazon Prime. All right. I think we're good. I'm going to turn this off and just let it sit here because it'll continue to sizzle. I think I'm good with this color. So what would y'all drizzle that on? Oh, I got something for you. I'm going to let it sit here because I want it to stay kind of warm. Do not taste it at this point. Yeah, you put it on morning, oat, morning oats. This is going to be lava hot. Anytime you have melted butter and sugar, it's like toffee. You've got to let it cool a little bit. Ooh, uh, Margo would put this on cheesecake. See, y'all are doing it. Okay, focus, Maggie. So he did half a teaspoon of maple flavor on here. So since we're quadrupling it, we need two teaspoons. All right. And for me, who doesn't really like maple flavor, it's perfect. Like I said, it kind of has the mix between like dinner butter mints and the soft peppermints. So it's going to give you that like cool, like soft, melty texture. Oh my gosh, y'all, you could do butter extract. I just, oh my gosh, I'm not going to do it right now. But see, this is how my mind goes. I have butter and peppermint extracts. You could make your own like butter. Oh my gosh. Focus, Maggie. Okay. So we need two teaspoons of maple. This is uh, going to give us kind of that earthy flavor. Real brown sugar gets the brown from molasses. Do I have molasses? No. That's why I'm your substitute teacher. Christina says, how much is this bag of Splenda? I want to say it was like $11. But it's a big bag, y'all. It's um three pounds. So you can also get smaller bags. I just use it a lot, so I went ahead and got the big one. Cognizance is here, my dear. She says, I make all my various granola toppings homemade, all natural. You're definitely going to try that. Absolutely. So you all will see. Notice how it was moving really fast when it was hot. But you notice now that it's um, cooled down, how it's kind of getting sticky icky. That's what we want. All right. So it's just kind of sliding slow. Let it cool. We'll make this and then I'm going to top it and then I'm going to let y'all have your evening. Hello, I am Zane. All right. So two teaspoons of maple extract. So I'm going to make it directly in the container. This one is maple, right? <laughs> Double check. Y'all know how I mess up. So one and two. So the maple does give you some color, but you'll see by the time I mix it up, it's not enough color for this. All right, let's get a clean spoon. And um, he says, get in there with your hands. I'm gonna use the spoon at first, but you see how you kind of have these like wet, chunky clumps. That's what you need to get in there with your hands and really just kind of squeeze it between your fingers and it'll just 
Uh, get that maple flavor in everything, plus break up those clumps. Hello, Nayeli. So that's why I have a little brown on my fingers, but cooking can be messy, but it's fun. So this is something that you could make and stock your pantry with, you know, the things that you need. So you could make this a peppermint um, extract sugar. You could make this um, a butter sugar. I'm just getting down towards the bottom, making sure I get all of that up. Uh, Christina says, does this recipe call for nutmeg? You can. When I do the fried apples, I usually do cinnamon. But because we're trying the sugar for the first time, I want to keep it very plain so I can taste it and compare it to what I usually make. You got to get some? Absolutely. Margo says, off topic, did you make any more almond milk? No, but I need to. I am used it up. You're going to see what I'm going to pull out of the fridge. Y'all, I have been using that almond milk. Thank you, Gillis, for the gift. Um, the almond, the nut milk maker, I figured out how to make it properly and it's been great. Let's see, do I have any left? I think it's, yeah. Well, let me go ahead and take this out. I have chia pudding that I made with our homemade almond milk. And this is like a high protein snack that I've been having, but it needs to set in the refrigerator so it's cold. So I wanted something warm to put on top. So this is gonna be our finished product. So this is the almond milk that we made. And I don't know if y'all can see, it kind of settles a little bit, but all I do is like swirl it up. And I have been using this, y'all making our own almond milk. Before you know it, I'm gonna have a farm, okay? I made almond milk one time in a row and now, I need to go to the farmer's market and sell stuff. <laughs> okay, focus, Maggie. All right, so we've got our sugar and maple. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and put in, let's move the apple so I don't make a mess. Now I'm gonna taste it since it's pretty much cooled down. I'm gonna taste one. And then I'll move it behind me. I'm gonna get one of the burnt, burnt bits. I don't know if that's burnt to y'all, but let's give it a try. It is good. Now I'm going to be honest with you. The heat, I feel that it's a substitute more than just sugar. You can feel like a little slight aftertaste for me. I'm fine with it, but the heat kind of brought out a little bit of the, you can tell, I don't know, maybe it's like the little burnt bits. I'm fine with it, y'all. Look at my apple, all right? I feel like I should put it in a bowl or something nicer. I'm showing it to y'all looking all crazy. Presentation is everything. I want to leave it in this pan so it's nice and hot, but you all see, and we've made, we used to make fried apples all the time. You all see that? So if you wanted to make like an apple pie, like a crustless apple pie a la mode, put this in your bowl, sit down when everybody else is having apple pie, put your, you know, ice cream or whatever on here, some whipped cream, all right, so I'm just gonna move this behind. We're gonna serve that up in just a minute over the chia pudding or whatever you would like. All right, so now I just need to get in here with my hands. I'm gonna add like five drops of brown food coloring, all right? So this is giving us the flavor. You can see it's slightly brown, but it's not the kind of brown Brown sugar brown. Brown sugar, babe. I get hot on your love, don't know how to behave. Brown sugar, babe. <laughs> Why? Why, Maggie? Why? I'm going to get another talking to. I know. I just, I can't, I can't help myself, y'all. I get excited. All right. So we have brown sugar. I mean, brown food coloring. Let's do one, two, three, four. A little goes a long way. So I'm gonna stir by spoon, y'all are laughing at me. And then I'm gonna get in there with my hands cause you've got to. All right, so literally I'm just gonna pick up clumps 
and I'm going to go through my fingers like this to kind of get that um, color dispersed. And I would do a few drops at first, and then um, if you need more, add it. But you know, if you go in really heavy with the food coloring, so y'all see it starting to come together. If you go in really heavy with the food coloring, I mean, it won't hurt anything, but you know, we all eat with our eyes. So we wanna pretend that we have that when we have our own brown sugar. Jurgen's laughing at me. I know y'all, I'm just doing, I'm just always doing stuff. It's coming together, see how it's coming together? So I have little bits of food coloring, you see there? So just try to squeeze it through, but that is it y'all. This is the crisp cooking keto, yummy color. So you can do like a light brown sugar. If you like like a darker, <clears throat> a darker brown sugar, just add more food coloring. And the maple, it, it's got that, um, like I said, it's got that kind of wet sand consistency. Shout out to the playgrounds. Um, or like those after dinner butter mints. That's what it feels like between my fingers. Like literally you, you touch it and it just dissolves. So that's it, y'all. I'm just getting my finger in the corner, getting a, in, get in there. You know, if you got a little bit of regular sugar down in there. So look, you could do this with gloves. Y'all told me to use my hands, but you could do this with gloves. This could be another inexpensive like teacher gift or, you know, neighbor gift. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You can make different varieties. You could make whatever extracts you have. Um, all right. We're done. So I've got a little on the hands, but we made another brown sugar. All right, so you could use that as a garnish. You could do that on anything. Let me wash my hands, make my pudding and be done. We are right at time. All right. So this is my first time making this. I feel like I should just dump this one in here. So I don't know, we'll see. You know how brown sugar, hardens on you. I think you can microwave it. There's all kind of hacks to soften it. Oh, I've got some food coloring on the back of that. So we'll take care of that later. But just a little dollar store container, or you could put it in another container, put a little bow or welcome to the neighborhood or something on there, you know, a nice little gift. Or if you can have regular sugar, just make your own like maple flavored sugar or butter flavored sugar or peppermint flavored sugar, little, um, little teacher's gifts or holiday gifts or whatever. <laughs> You're going to go on. Good night. Okay. So I made this chia pudding with our homemade almond milk. It's just um, chia seeds, um, almond milk, and I put some vanilla flavor in here and a little bit of Splenda. I usually eat this. It helps keep me full but it's cold because it has to set in the fridge. And so it's like when the weather's still kind of cold, I'm like, Ugh. so let me see if I can make this with our apples. And y'all know. Oh yeah, you know you want some. Okay, let's get a bowl. All right. So let me move everything because once we put the whipped cream on, I got to be ready for the photo. Y'all know the whipped cream starts sliding down. So let's move everything so we can act like we're professionals over here. This is how my channel started. I would just make these recipes I found on the internet. Then I would post a picture and people would say, did you make that? Yes. Hello, Quincy Black. Yes, I made it. All right. So I usually just eat it out of the little jar here. I look like I have henna on my hands, but I'm going to pour this into this bowl. Okay. So I know I would eat it just like this. If you're new to chia pudding, maybe we could do a series on that. But this is like a great, and you don't have to spend a lot of money. You could sit down have this as a breakfast, has, have it as a dessert. Okay, so we have our mm, chia pudding, but it's cold. So now we're going to put our fried apples on top. Hello, Miss Cece. All right. 
and they're still warm in my hand. We made our own brown sugar fried apples, all right? So we are going to just one apple. Oh yeah, y'all. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. All right, so we're just gonna put that everywhere. If you don't like chia pudding, put this on your oatmeal. You could even do like a layer, you know, those jars, those like mason jars, where you put like a little bit of chia pudding, a little bit of apple, and then more chia pudding. Y'all can get creative. Don't be sitting there looking at me like the kids do. You know, when you make something for yourself after you cook for them and they're like, what's that, mom? You got your own stuff. Everybody looking at what I'm eating. Sugar-free, dairy-free, gluten-free. Mm. Focus, Maggie. If you wanted a little crunch, you could do like some chopped almonds or walnuts or uh, sunflower seeds or whatever you want. Make your own little bowl. Don't be paying $10 and $20 for that. Hello, Ray. Thank you so much for being here. All right. And then lastly, we're going to go in with the whipped cream, dairy-free. I'm using almond milk whipped cream. You can use whatever you like. And then we're gonna garnish it with our brown sugar. All right. So we've got some warm, we've got some cold. That's a little bit of a lot, <laughs> greedy. All right, but, and then we'll put some brown sugar on here. All right, let me take a picture quickly. Don't fall, don't fall. Don't fall. Ay -ay. All right. So, so when y'all see these pictures, oh my gosh, that looks good. Let me get in from the side. Ooh, y'all, this looks so good. Can't wait, can't wait, can't wait. All right, let's take one more with the flash and I'm going to taste it. Oh my goodness, y'all. Oh my gosh, look at that. All right, and then the little video, because Marcus says I need to do voiceover, whatever. Kids know everything. All right, let's get in here. All right, taste test and we're done. Greedy, gonna go in with the big spoon. All right, so we've got chia pudding, we've got apples, we got um, whipped cream, sugar-free, dairy-free, gluten-free. I'm still processing. Where's my towel? Mm, 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 mm. Y'all. I'm telling you, you have the chewiness of the apple. You have the chia pudding, which is healthy, good stuff. What is it? I don't know. Dairy-free whipped cream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, everybody. I am going to enjoy. I'll make some man food and post that later. But thank you, Chris Cook in Nashville. Mm. Mm. Let me dismiss. Hello, leading to leap and Hakuna Matata. I want to take one more picture of the cross section. So today's Monday, we are done. I'll be back tomorrow for another cooking stream. What are we making? I don't know. When are we making it? Usually dinner time, East Coast. All right, I'm in Atlanta. <laughs> Margo says, I love when you get happy. Aw, thank you all for sharing. Let's go ahead and dismiss. Thank you, Instagram. See you all tomorrow. All right, TikTok, thank you all so much. Class is dismissed. Thank you for the shares. Oh, yeah, Christina would put walnuts. I have walnuts. All right, just for you, I got a couple walnuts. It could be any. Because I was thinking about...
Give it a try. Let me go before I get carried away. Raisins, whatever you want. Yum. All right, everybody. Class is dismissed.